So, hopefully it works now. <laughs> Hello guys. Normally you should see the stream appear. Because you know what, I've been making it uh, and <laughs> the stream didn't work, so... Tonight's not my night, I'm start... Uh, okay, as you... <laughs> so, let's remove all this and start again from zero because but what I did a stream which <laughs> which didn't work and uh, you can hear you can see okay so guys thank you very much for your patience uh, I was convinced my stream was uh, plan planned for Saturday night 11.45 in uh, Paris time which is uh, uh, the reason why I'll, I'll be making one because uh, it's it's what I've advertised on my uh, Facebook page. So tomorrow night there will be another one. And uh, for the brave ones, uh, Jared, thank you very much for the brave ones who stayed uh, online and uh, waited for the for tonight's uh, stream. Uh, let's make one. Let's make one. Uh, you'll see it. Uh, my failed uh, stream jet, uh, that I just did uh, has been an opportunity to put my ideas back together to, to Blender because I won't call this a tutorial because Blender is, is still a, a difficult env environment uh, for me because I'm much more at ease with uh, Fusion 360 and uh, so let's get let's get started we want to we've been working on the tiger cat wheel and uh, we have a tire we have some rims and now we want a nice bulge under our tire uh, i've been already making wheels with fusion i've made a bulging on the on the fusion in the in Fusion Smash mode, the, the purple, pinkish purple uh, mode in the former mode, and honestly, it's been very, very difficult uh, because you need to generate a lot, lot of geometry to have uh, a shape which is which uh, conforms accurately to your drawings. Honestly, it's been really, dif really difficult, and uh, and you'll see that in Blender. The most difficult is uh, the preparation. The mod each time, the mod most difficult for me is to get back into Blender menus, navigation, and uh, layout, which is uh, extremely powerful, but also complicated and uh, unf unfriendly to me, at least. But uh, let's go. So. That uh, normally is latest version of Blender, Blender 3.0.0, uh, and so uh, Jared, uh, are you familiar with Blender, or do, do do you want a quick overview on the on the menus or, or anything? And uh, I see someone else on the on the chat. If you if you have any question, I have my. Uh, my phone uh, right here. If you have any question, uh, just go ahead and, and tell me. So uh, the, the cube at the beginning, we don't need him. We we'll remove the, the cube, and we'll be importing import as an STL. We'll take our tire. Uh, so in my uh, will be my tire i want as well my rim and its front cover because i want a, a whole overview of of my assembly and it should be coming so uh, you'll see me struggle a bit because i have a, a little uh, batteries problems with my mouse so i'll be switching from my mouse to my mouse pad so uh, let's go. Uh, quick overview, Jared. So, uh, Blender, you said uh, you are in a scene actually. Blender allows you to model some uh, parts, some objects, but also some. Uh, 
in the end, uh, Blender's uh, purpose is to to build a complete scene with a background, with a with a, a scenery, a decor, or and uh, you can also end up any, making animations. So you you building a, a, you have a, a full sp a space, and also camera you can set up cameras and lights, and you can navigate in your scene or in your animation from different points of view, set up different lighting li lightings. So as modelers, we'll be using just a tiny drop of uh, Blender's possibilities. And um, so on top right, we have our object. Uh, so a camera, uh, which shall we move? We don't need it. Uh, the light as well, we don't need it. So I, in top right, front cover, rim, and tire. If I select an object, if I go up left, I have some menus that goes with the object mode and my object has also an edit mode, a sculpt mode, which allows to, that's, that's a place where you can pull the flesh, uh, you have different knives or different uh, brushes to manipulate your, your, your mesh, and uh, vertex paint, white paint, texture paint, I don't know, uh, I haven't been the, that, long, uh, that long, and uh, so we'll, we'll be navigating for, for the tire and between the object mode and the edit mode as well. And so I can make selection just of each part. I've set in my scene, I've set the rim as well to because bulging will uh, will see uh, will see shortly is just a way to sculpt our our tire. We'll be using a, a, a lattice, a, a lattice which is a, will, which will be laying over the, the tire, and with the different uh, vertices of the lattice, we'll be just displacing our tire, just like uh, manipulating, uh, like in a, in a sculpture. And uh, the trick is for bulging tires, and in a more general. Uh, view it's very easy to go overdone to to go a bit too 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 spectacular because it's uh, it's pleasing to make it's uh, we want it's difficult to keep the sweet spot between uh, realism between uh, being visible as well and interesting and not going too far so that's why i decided to uh, I prefer to to make my bulging with a with a rim as well to to keep a, a good overview of my of my wheel and uh, also to keep in mind that I have an assembly with a tire and a rim and you've heard I uh, just said that we'll be displacing the the mesh and the the flesh of uh, our tire. But we have to keep in mind we want the assembly to be still with the same sort of tolerance we, we decided during the design infusion. So we'll be beginning by setting a, a, a group of vertices that, that will be frozen and that won't move by all the displacement we, we're going to make. So the first thing I'll be doing is for just a few minutes just hide my uh, rim. I'm going to the edit mode. I'm just making sure I've selected my tire. I'm going to the edit mode and now here's my mesh. Right? And I'm going to the menu on top right and I'm going to select this this button here, which is important, is uh, I'm letting the pop-up appear. That's the toggle X-ray. The toggle X-ray allows when I'm going to be on the side view. I'm going to. I'll need to make a selection of this uh, circle of vertices. It will allow me to select all the vertices which are 
in the background of my uh, of my plane. I'm going to select the visible vertices, but also the, all the vertices which are hidden and uh, in the background, so that uh, my, my selection will be quicker and more more efficient. And so, uh, I is a tire solid shape. It's a it's a solid shape, uh, Jared. It's a, it's a it's a it's a very exact tire we we took out of uh, Fusion, and it's a it's a solid. It's a solid. If I come back to the object mode, here's the mesh. Here's the mesh, and uh, normally it's a it's a solid. I've had a few surprises of uh, solid uh, solid parts going into uh, surfaces and hollow parts, but in bulging in, in the process we're going to make, no worries, we we have a solid. So I get back in in my X-ray mode. So and you see the little gizmo. Uh, it's a it's a main navigation gizmo. If I hit X, I'm going to the side view. I now hit the C key to have this uh, selection brush, and with my with my uh, mouse, mouse uh, wheel, I can adapt its size. And I'm going to make a selection now at the as thin as possible. Going upwards, it's no worries because when we are going to displace our flesh, we will need to pay attention to the transition between the pin group that we are setting between the frozen vertices and between the rest of the tire, which will be movable. At this area, we might see some artifacts uh, appear. Right, so I have my se selection. And I go down below here. This uh, triangle is object data properties. That's where I can create a vertex group. I hit plus, plus, sorry, and uh, assign. And uh, I can rename, let's say, pin group. And uh, something which is not very intuitive in uh, Blender is the assign thing. Once you get out of your selection, it's difficult to see what, what's your pin group and uh, it's not an, an easy thing. So, uh, you, you just have to remember you hit assign and uh, tr trust yourself. It's not a very easy easy thing in render, I think. So now I go back to object mode. I have my pin group attached to my tire. And now I am in object mode. I can add a new object, which is my lattice, which appears here at the center. So don't be uh, worried if you have the rim and the tire. On the front cover, the, lat the lattice won't be, will be hidden because it appears at the center origin of your of your scene. So. Yes, Jared, uh, the socket was hollow, and uh, that happened as well. I, I struggled with my uh, my cargo seat in my uh, Seahawk. Uh, I need to experiment. I don't know if uh, the hollow, uh, if the part became hollow due to the the, the cloth simulator in Blender, where I can uh, you can you can uh, design a part and then decide to inflate it with uh, some parameters of air pressure. You can decide to inflate it and. Uh, Tell the software that the material is a uh, is a cloth, so that wrinkles appear, or, and uh, it's a really powerful thing. But it also creates, I think, some uh, self in, uh, 
the the surface can be pierced and uh, not be manifold uh, anymore, and th th that might be the reason. And the other thing, uh, I whether I'm not too sure, so either it's a simulator uh, tool which created this problem, or the grain tool, because uh, I added some uh, some grain to my uh, to my uh, to my socket on the stick, and. Uh, for that, there is a displacement tool where you, you add a map of a black and white dot, uh, uh, just a, a noise, like a noise in a, in a picture or photograph, and use this noise to raise or lower a grain. And doing, doing this, maybe as well, uh, the grain has been uh, piercing the, the surface, and when the, the surface isn't manifold, Blender uh, uh, makes it uh, hollow. And the, I think it's one of the the reason is somewhere here in between the, those two factors. Uh, I'm trying to to investigate where where it came from. So uh, I had to cheat and struggle. Uh, there is a, a modifier in Blender, which is a solid solidify, where you can add uh, you can add thickness, but uh, this tool has limits. It allowed to to have a printable part. But uh, the, this tool has limits, especially in, uh, for example, if you remember the, the socket size, it's, it's a, a sort of pyramid with a chopped uh, tip. In corners or anything, uh, the thickness you add follows uh, the normals. And in the angles, you have the, the flesh which starts to, to come through uh, the, uh, the, the next faces and uh, it makes a mess. So, it saved it saved my uh, it saved my day for for my seats and for my for my gears uh, for my for my uh, joystick uh, socket. But I need to to investigate where clearly where where it came from. But you'll see for the time no no factor no problem. So I have my lattice selected. So I hit the S key and you see it changes. S is for scale, and by pulling the handle. Normally, it will be starting to appear, and I'll take it just for ease of view, large enough to pop out of my wheel. And uh, another trap in the uh, bulging is uh, to select a too wide space to work on the tire, uh, which I did uh, on my first attempt because it's a spectacular effect uh, which is uh, quite fun to make and uh, we will easily go too far too much uh, too quick and too venturous and so uh, what i suggest is to set a lattice which is not much more not not much bigger than this so uh, another blender you you if you are in if you start with blender you need to learn quite some uh, hotkeys. The other one is uh, J for grab and uh, if I hit J then Z, Z, Z I'll be constraining my movement on the Z axis and I'm pulling it down and actually I'm aiming at the south of my rim you see um, uh, and now I'm going to scale my lattice on the Z, if I hit S and Z, I, I constrain my rescaling on the Z axis. And uh, here we go. So J, Z, I'm moving back up. I'm going to go just right here. Normally, it will be enough. Uh, just checking, I'm uh, popping out on each side. And uh, maybe mm, it will be enough. So for the moment, my lattice has only eight vertices. And uh, from the little experience I have, I, I know I need more of them. And so on lattice, I have a menu here with a resolution. And with those two boxes I can add some resolution to my lattice so do it as such 
and uh, yes, such a boxing is you don't want too too many vertices. Such a box such a box is uh, quite a comfortable one to to work with. Four four vertices per per line. It's uh, it's more than enough. All right. So I'm trying to put back my ideas together. I'm going to select my wheel, my tire. Sorry, um, I select my tire, and now I'm going to go to the modifier menu. So modifiers, like in Blend, uh, there is an analogy with modifiers on the Lightroom. Uh, the different tools you have in Lightroom work the same like in uh, Blender. You can modify your part with a modifier. You can make a pile of modifiers. And as long as you don't apply your modifier, you can toggle them. You can uh, move them in uh, in your pile. You, move, you can move them up or down to vary the effect and the order of the effect. And as long as you don't apply them, they are not permanent. You can toggle them. And once you apply them, they're, they're in the flesh. You, you can't go back anymore unless you hit the Ctrl Z uh, key if you have uh, if it wasn't uh, too far too far in the uh, too far ago. So I want as a modifier a lattice modifier, making sure I am in the with my tire selected so that this modifier is acting on my tire and connected to my tire. My object, if I click to object, he knows that uh, he will be Blender will be looking for all the lattices in uh, in our scene. So my lattice, vertex group, my pin group. That's uh, for those who just uh, joined, I see a, a few more people. For the uh, the, the pin group is uh, the selection of all the vertices, which are the middle, which form the middle cylinder and uh, the middle contour, so that I don't move them; they are frozen, and I keep my uh, a good fit with my with my rim. And I select, I activate this vertex group here by the this little button. Which again, invert vertex group influence uh, interface is not very clear to me. Uh, each time I, I make a, an attempt uh, at uh, making this wheel, I never know if this button has to be blue or, or gray. Uh, so normally, it's uh, it's good. And now my modif my modifier is set up. I come back my lattice and I'm going to edit my lattice and any movement I will be performing with my by, when editing my lattice normally will be moving the flesh of my tire so let's go to edit mode and first thing I'll be doing is making a flat bottom so I'm um, Ah, no, that's my mouse battery, which is dying again. Okay, it's good. And uh, Jared, so as well, you'll see that uh, another uncool thing is that uh, all the movements in in Blender are not exactly the same for the the pan for for the zoom and anything. You switching from Fusion to Blender, uh, not cool, not cool. So I'm making a section of all the bottom vertices, and let's let's cross fingers. If I hit J for grab, Z to constrain my movement on the Z axis, and here we go. We see the flat appear, and uh, let's see. Now it's just a sort of down wheel it's just now a matter of picking the right vertices I'm taking the, the uh, one step up I hit J and Z I, I grab and move them on the Z no this is not good so 
I cancel this movement. I'm going just to pick up. I'm struggling with my mouse, sorry. Mm, let's see which one we take. Up oh, this section. Yep, much better. And you see, it's simple as that. And you see my geometry, my grooves remain perfectly clean. And all the details, all the raised lines, everything is just being smoothly moved upward. And we are going to continue slowly. So. Toggle back, toggle. Uh, it's very easy to go a step too far, so we're going to start moving on the side. Cool thing is, uh, I'm struggling with my mouse uh, as well. Sorry, guys. Uh, your display, it's uh, you have to keep in mind. It's uh, it's not a simulate. Uh, what I mean, what I want to express, it's not a simulating tool. So when you push your wheel on a, your rubber on the Z axis, you are not simulating the side bulging. You are just pushing the, the mesh uh, upwards, and you you need to make the the side bulging in a second attempt, and you you'll be going to make it on your on your own. Cool thing is that. Which I like. It's a it's a self-made thing, and uh, it's a sort of sculpt. It will it's going to be very personal. I found space my second. Ah, uh, there are some problems with between space mouse and Blender. Actually, I've tried it, uh, and uh, not satisfying. It didn't really work. It works a charm on uh, Fusion. But on Blender, uh, I'm documenting at, at the moment. Uh, uh, I'm, I didn't get all the all the movements. Uh, uh, it it worked flawlessly with uh, Fusion, but uh, here in Blender, uh, no, I, I need to find out what happened. And so for the side bulging, I chose those four ones and I hit. J for grab, and now I'm going to constrain it on the X axis, and I'm going to carefully watch on top left of my screen. You see, I have the value of my displacement, and I'm going to pick the value minus 1.2. Minus 1.2. Let's see how it looks. A little bit too much, maybe, but let's keep it for for to, uh, for tonight. And the thing is, I keep this value in mind to replicate it on the other side because so far I've been trying uh, to me. Uh, I haven't found how to mirror uh, just JX. Sorry, one point. Uh, was it 1.2 or 1.6? Because I'm talking as I am speaking. No, nope. uh, <laughs> shouldn't. That was 1.6. J X 1.6, and I should be good. Have a nice symmetry. And here it is. So uh, there is a mirror tool. Uh, the, the only th uh, mirror, uh, mirror thing I managed was to 
by using the mirror uh, the mirror uh, modifier I got some letters from the opposite appear on the on the sidewall not satisfying uh, there is another solution which works it's to use a plan uh, in the vert in the vertical to slice the tire in two replicate it with uh, replicating on, on blender is uh, the d key for uh, duplicate and uh, your duplicate then you need to flip it around the z axis by 180 and then you rebuild a second fa the, the second half of your tire but uh, if you want to go uh, if you want to go this way you have to make sure first that your tread has been uh, centered at, uh, and started at the very top of your tire if you want to have a flush uh, to have a flush uh, joint on your center line, so that work uh, working on just half a tire could work. And uh, if if you want to go this way, you have to anticipate it with with your grooves, and uh, you want to perform your cut at the very end because uh, if you slice your tire in. A, and then perform your lattice modifying you'll you'll be losing your flat size and uh, when flipping your duplicate uh, some problems might appear on the uh, on your center line and you can have little holes you can uh, lose your manifold uh, properties uh, on your tire so if you want to if you want to be free of move with your lattice and, and uh, don't care about uh, picking all the values for the side uh, displacement. Pick your full tire, make your displacement on one side, then only chop it in two, slice it in two with a plan, duplicate and uh, rotate the duplicate uh, around the z-axis. Uh, that's a better way I, I found. Uh, honestly, I took the habit to I took the habit to to make all my to replicate my my X uh, displacement. Uh, not not a big deal. And uh, so then once your lattice, uh, as you can see, once your lattice is done and properly set, now it's just just uh, a sort of uh, sculpting. So. Let's see, for example, um, if I want to move my bulge a little bit higher, I, I can, let's say, uh, you see the two vertices I picked, I'm going to move them on the Z axis. So I, had, I hit G and Z, so that they move on the Z. Move those one up. And... Uh, I can, for example, decide to actually uh, like it, and now I can decide, for example, to pick up only those four ones and work my flat bottom, so J and Z, and. You see there's a sort of uh, progressive editing, everything moves quite smoothly. And uh, here we go. And uh, as well, another possibility, you can have two, two, vari uh, two variations, your choice. Uh, you can decide either to have your whole, uh, your whole trade line unaffected just flat and uh, but you will never have a, f a fully fully flat face we are going to uh, I try to get as close as possible but uh, the other possibility you see what I mean is using a plan and slice my or, or any of uh, a plan and slice my tire at, at the bottom to have a completely fat face but this way you would lose the 
your diamond pattern just on the contact shape. Thing I want to refer to is uh, a lot of us want to use uh, our models for picturing and often when we flip our model to have a, a picture of, uh, of uh, the aircraft belly, I never too much like to see tires with, uh, for example, the, the holes we did in the, in the bottom face to, to insert a toothpick or I, I don't like to have something which tells me you are looking at a model. Uh, those, little, those little details uh, just pick the audience out of the storytelling and it's uh, just a blink that says, hey, it's a, it's a model. Uh, I, I prefer to keep my, my tire, if I have the possibility, I prefer to keep my tire with a, a nice thread uh, all around and uh, maybe add some mud or anything, but uh, try not to distract the audience from, uh, from the view of an aircraft and have uh, something. Even if, when displayed, uh, this face is invisible. Uh, on the bottom uh, picture, I like to have a clean, uh, clean tire all the way around. So, your choice. Uh, the problem is... Uh, problem. No. Using a plan as a slicer, you have a, you could you can have a perfectly flat surface, and uh, it would be maybe more easy to to sit your plane nicely and evenly on the flat uh, on the flat uh, display uh, plan. So I hope this makes sense. You you have those two possibility two two possibilities to to consider your your choice. Uh, Ramon, question. Are you able to select the lattice vertices on both sides, then scale horizontally? Uh, we'll try. Uh, let's see. Uh, if I select. Selecting one face. Select the other face and let's see what the scaling uh, on. Nope, I scale on the X. Hey, so that, that could work. So, Ramon, uh, Ramon thank you very much. Uh, let's see. So, I'm, uh, I'm going to J. X that was 1.6 if I remember well. Mm, can't remember. I'm going to scale S Z zero. No. S Y. Zero. No. Trying to get my uh, lattice flat again. Sx zero. Okay. Sx zero. Enter. Sx zero. Enter. When you have uh, uh, Ramon, you you seem uh, more familiar on Blender. That's for Jared. Uh, when you have a mesh, if you want to get your things flat again, you can select a scale which you constrain on the axis and put a zero value and you line up all your vertices. That's, a, that's a, the way I did. So, I'm struggling with this mouse, so sorry. I'm going to select my four vertices and uh, I'll use the Ramon's suggestion. I'm starting from flat, so four vertices on this way. You, no, not you. You. And I'm going to scale on X. And yes, it works. Ramon, very, very good suggestion. Thank you very much. 
see my lattice is moving symmetrically so we have the symmetry at rest a super cool see you see guys uh, something uh, I always say uh, sh when sharing on uh, Facebook or now on YouTube sharing is always a win-win thing I'm always happy to share and uh, you will get always a good reward when sharing thank you very much Ramon thank you so I'm going to scale it a little bit more there we go and now you can imagine just to pick up uh, Let's see those two ones. And trust me, you can spend quite some time playing with your lattice. And I'm going to reduce a little bit. And quite often, you need to move your tire, move your tire, and uh, check what, what you've been doing. And uh, you see a bit earlier. So I have been quite lazy with my selection and I shouldn't have. You see what appeared. I wanted to show you uh, when selecting my um, when selecting my pin group, I've selected the thinnest uh, the selection as possible on the on the tire contour because of the transition between my pin group and my tire and uh, some artifacts can appear and. Uh, you see, I'm learning that now, uh, so that uh, I could be lazy on the on the upper part upper part of my tire. And you see, I shouldn't. I, sh I should have been uh, disciplined and uh, kept it very thin on top as well. Uh, I didn't imagine it, my tire would uh, be affected. You see, so selecting the pin group uh, suggestion would be to be as disciplined uh, on the top part than, uh, than on the lower part, so not to have those artifacts uh, appear. You see, and uh, so that's that's pretty, pretty much it. Uh, Ramon, thanks very much, because uh, uh, to be honest, yesterday uh, I brought my laptop uh, at work and uh, during a pause uh, I tried everything I could to to find the, the different symmetry symmetrization possibilities, and uh, I found a way to slice my tire in two, flip it by 180. But uh, I was lucky that my diamond threads were centered on the and my all the geometries. Uh, the the very first diamond is centered on top, so it worked. But uh, I was lucky. Thank you very much for, for your input, uh, Raymond. Thank you very much. And uh, you see how straightforward it is. And now, no, just it's a matter of picking the enough geometry in your lattice to have some control. But you don't need too much. You don't need uh, a too wide uh, a too wide uh, lattice because there is, uh, the, the progressive editing will be acting quite a lot on the, on the, the movement will be sp spread quite on all the tire and you can see it by how much the top of the tire uh, has been affected uh, and uh, if you don't want those, uh, those artifacts to appear Make sure you're uh, less lazy than me and uh, make a nice thin uh, pin group with uh, the vertices and uh, everything will be going fine. Uh, you don't know Blender, you know Maya. Terry is the same, it's just... Uh, all right. So guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, yes, uh, I'll be adding for uh, those who are not familiar with Blender. Uh, once your once your once your work is done, uh, you, for this tire I'll be keeping uh, a separate assembly. But let's say you want to give a try and print. Uh, a possible thing would be to print the tire 
and the, the main rim and keep the front cover I did as a separate part and for this very simple go to object mode with a shift you select your two objects and go to file export STL selection and now you'll be exporting your selection as a single STL and Blender will take care of all the merging and, uh, and uh, let's say if I uh, let's name it bulged tire half rim and now if I go in my computer and here it is you see Blender will, uh, Blender deals, deals quite well with uh, merging uh, objects it's a uh, And here we go, we have uh, an STL with a, a bulge, uh, or if I just hit select my, my, my tire, export, STL, say Ramon bulged, tire, selection, export my STL. it gone and there we go and you see how clean my thread line is it's just simple as that the 